Well, it's my final morning, or my final, oh, sorry, you need to start again. penultimate day today. I've packed up from Clarenville and I've just been taking a steady roll back down the Trans-Canada Highway. I turned off a couple of little places that I like the name of. There was one which I think is called Heart Little Ease. I thought that sounded sweet, that needed investigating. Um, there wasn't really much there. Uh, the weather is overcast, cloudy, the light's not particularly good. Um, and the water in the cove was rippled, so I didn't hang around and try and get any shots. Now, as you're driving down the Trans Canada Highway, on either side of the road, there are loads if you can see this, a pond or lake or bodies of water. I'm not quite sure what they call them over here. And there's nowhere to bloody pull over. I've stopped for a couple because the reflections were absolutely perfect. The backgrounds were mountains and greenery and yellow floor, um, foliage and stuff. Oh, awesome. But can't get down. With a lot of them, there's a boggy area surrounding them and I really didn't fancy ending up getting stuck in a bog. I guess it's down to local knowledge. You would, if you lived around the area, you'd know where you could go and where you couldn't or how to get to some of the less accessible places. But I saw a turning for Little Cove and on the way down, I spotted this one. Whoops, where are we gone? Where are you gone? This one. And I thought, oh, if that is like that, when I come back, I shall stop. And the reason I packed the camera away is because I did my shots and then the wind picked up something rotten and all the reflections disappeared. But it's my type of shot. You've got, I had perfectly still reflections this morning. Um, there's a little bit of detail in the sky. It's probably going to be possible to bring it out a little bit more in Photoshop. And really difficult to get a composition. You go to the lakes as a general rule, and not everywhere, I, I admit, you can get to the water's edge. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not. There isn't really a path down there. Come up with a, a kind of composition here. We've got fir tree here, and a little way over here we've got another little bush. So I've sort of used those on either side to frame the image. And then it's just leading back through the reflection beautiful trees over there back up to the rocky tops of the hills which I think you can see and as I say that lovely grey cloudy sky. Um, I used the polarizer to bring the colours out to really make them pop out and I used the reverse grad which has been a huge huge help whilst I've been over here and I did put the little stopper on just to see if I could get a little bit of streakiness in the clouds kind of worked and I think I was getting four seconds at F14, ISO 100. And yeah, I've got an image that I like. So I am now, well, hey, losing you with this thing. There we go. Um, I'm heading on to St. John's. I've got about 100 clicks to go. And then I'm hoping to go to a place called Conception Bay, which is my plan for sunset. Whether it'll work or not is anybody's guess.
I thought I'd give you a quick swizzle round so you can see what Forest Street is like and what the outside of the Monroe House looks like. Now I found it on Expedia and I chose it, me being me, because it was the cheapest place going and it is absolutely stunning. ashamed I've actually arrived somewhere early. I had a bit of a brain fart. I got in my mind to go to Conception Bay for sunrise. Have a scout round, uh, sorry sunset. Have a scout round, see what's what. I didn't realise there was a Conception Bay South and a Conception Bay. And Conception Bay South is only about 20 minutes. And I knew I wanted to go to Conception Bay for a reason. I couldn't remember what the reason was. <laughs> so having a look through a little tourist information guide um, at Monroe House, I suddenly saw the reason why I decided I wanted to go. And it's this beast in the background, which I don't think you're going to see particularly well, because we're kind of at the wrong angle. It's a shipwreck. I was reading a little bit about it. Um, there was the condensed version is there were three ships. Uh, I think they were fishing ships, and they were all destined to be taken out to sea and sunk because they'd reached the end of their lives. Two sister ships to this one made it out of the bay, and then there was a really horrendous storm, and this one sunk where it was moored and it's been there ever since. And apparently the locals think it's a bit of a black, um, an eyesore. Uh, the tourists and the photographers love it. So I thought, well, it'd be rude not to really, wouldn't it? So I jumped in the car, and it says 72 miles away. I'm like, holy crap. And I've had a quick wander around, and in terms of composition, there's only a couple of things I think that you can do. One is shooting essentially from where I stood back down with the bow of what I presume is the bow of the ship looks like the pointy end um, and getting the reflections in that leads you down to the mountains that are in the background I would turn you around and show you but you're going to be looking an, into the sun um, and the other is if you can just see uh, I'm not sure you would but over here there is a a mini cruiser boat moored up and you can shoot from there and that would include again I think we've got the sun in completely the wrong place oh there's a little hut a little red boat house here which is kind of collapsed into the water I think that really is about it um, I'm going to carry on having wander around because it's only about quarter to six and sunset is about five to seven I believe The jury's still out on whether we're going to get any colour in the sky for sunset because it's been a miserable day for most of it. I've not had huge amounts of rain, just a few spits and spots here and there. But the sky is clearing. There's some nice cloud detail up there. Whee! There's absolutely bugger all up here and the sun's setting behind us. So theoretically that should light up. Fingers crossed this will light up behind me. Um, but it's, I think it's going to be an optional extra tonight. Pretty much like keeping to the speed limit is around this place. I can't believe how I'm sticking to the speed limit fairly religiously because I really don't want to get done and get fined. Um, everybody is just blasting past me. It's really frustrating. If I was at home, it wouldn't be an issue. Um, but I, I want to try and behave myself while I'm here. That's actually quite a nice angle. This one bloody big ship, that. So, I don't know, I've got quite a while to wait until we're due to hit sunset. I've no idea what the tide's going to do, whether it's in, out, or sort of in the middle. It's a very strong smell of fuel around here as well, which is really strange. I 
kind of bizarre that she hasn't actually fallen over. I know you can't really see this because it's I'm shooting into the sun. So, if I manage to come up with anything, I will post it up. And then it's back to the Monroe Suites. And I've got a gorgeous room. I was supposed to be back in the Francis Little Suite. Um, <laughs> but somebody else decided they were in that room. So I rang Eric and said, oh no, 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 no. Right, okay. Um, and gave him some keys for another room, which is upstairs, which has its own dining room next door. An entertaining suite. <laughs> Again, it's just an absolutely stunning, stunning place. And for what it's costing, it's actually cheaper and far nicer than virtually any other place I've stayed at. And it's really good. So I'm going to stop waffling because I could waffle on forever. And I will catch up with you guys later. Bye!